And now let's do a new example. Here's a map, and in this map I'm showing you the pattern of mortgage foreclosures. And the question is, is there clustering in this pattern of mortgage foreclosures? So each point on this map is a location where we observed a, a foreclosure. So here we have a sample of the foreclosures, and do we, using the sample, can we conclude that the pattern of foreclosures or that that the process that causes the spatial pattern is a, a pattern that, that is clustered. So what do we know from this point pattern? We know that there are 40 foreclosures in our sample. Next we have to place our quadrats over this, uh, over this map. And we're going to do that in such a way that the expected number of observations per quadrat is 5. All right. So just like in the goodness of fit chi-squared statistics, quadrat analysis, um, we in, in quadrat analysis we want to use a quadrat pattern that that has uh, an expected value of five points per quadrat cell. So if we have 40 observations, that means that we can have eight or fewer quadrats. So that that would guarantee a minimum expected value of five points per quadrat. So here are the eight quadrats. And what we do next is just count how many points are in each quadrat. So quadrat one had seven points, that's this row. Quadrat two had four points, then we had four points, five points, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And we calculate, and then this, remember, is our xi variable. Now we need to calculate the mean invariance of this xi. So we have 40 as the total number of points. So the mean is just 40 over 8, which equals 5. And the variance, when we calculate it out, is 8.9. Next we have to calculate the VMR, which is the variance to mean ratio. So it's 8.9 over 5, which equals 1.78. Now this VMR is greater than 1, and remember, when VMR equals 1, that's when the point pattern is random. If it's more than 1, that tells us that the point pattern is more clustered than random. But let's do a chi-square test to see if it's significantly different to 1. Is this VMR significantly greater than 1? Let's conduct the, the six steps to hypothesis testing for the more for the mortgage foreclosure example. So the first step is to state the null and alternative. The null hypothesis is that VMR equals 1. In other words, the data are random. The alternative is we were asked to see if the data are clustered. In that case, we have the alternative as VMR greater than 1. So we're going to have a right-tailed test. Two, we're going to use a chi-squared test where chi-squared equals m minus 1 times vmr. And we are going to have m minus 1, 8 minus 1, 7 degrees of freedom. Three, we need to set the significance level. Just, we haven't specified in the question, so let's just use 10% in this case. And four, we need to draw out the zones of, of rejection. That's a lousy drawing. Not much better. <laughs> Last chance. There we are. Okay. And in this, <laughs> that's pretty bad too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, there we are. Okay. In this case, we have uh, chi squared across the bottom. Over here is the null hypothesis chi squared. So that's where VMR equals one. We're interested in knowing if we can see if VMR is significantly greater than 1. And in order to do that, we need to find a chi-squared out here in the right tail. We're going to have 10% of the area in the tail. So what is the critical chi-squared? We can go back to our Excel sheet. And we see here, if we want 10% in the tail, we're going to have to have 90% to the left of the tail. And I'm just going to change the degrees of freedom here from 9 
And in this case, recall, we have seven degrees of freedom. So the critical value is 12.0. So this critical, oh, I need to, this critical value over here is 12.0. And in step five, we calculate chi-squared. So we've got m minus one times VMR, which equals uh, seven times 1.78, which is 12.5. So the critical value is in this right tail so in step six, we're going to reject that the points are random, and in you know, and we can be ninety percent sure that mortgage foreclosures have a clustered pattern. foreclosures okay